Hello guys, welcome to Star Wars Timeline, and in today's video I'm doing something that many of you have requested, and that is to show off my collection. I decided to start with the Legends paperback section that I have, and I deliberately took them off the shelf because you guys won't be able to see them, they're all stacked together, you know, I don't have that much space to show it. Anyway, let's jump into it, you know, you will see the on-screen, all the collections that I have, and you may ask the question, how come, you know, most of the books that I've acquired are so pristine and crispy looking well the thing is i started reading as soon as i believe i as i graduated high school and that was my first and second year in college and you know star wars books when i once i discovered it's you know the huge expanded universe and that the fact that the books actually tie in, in into the movie and they all tell one you know consistent large story that really excited me and i basically started to going to like any local bookshops or Barnes and Nobles, you know, in the middle of New York City, we had really, really awesome one on the Lincoln Square on, on uh, 67th Street. There was a huge corner uh, Barnes and Nobles where I used to pick up most of these books. So I would go there and spend hours, you know, picking up the cleanest, most pristine cover that, you know, I can possibly find that the pages inside are not bent, you know, there's no dents or like dog ears on the corners of the pages. And, you know, I'm, I'm so much scrutiny went into picking uh, these books. That's why they look so good to this day. And honestly, I stopped using them that much. I don't read these uh, physical books because I pretty much also bought all of the ebook format, you know, digital versions of these titles. Um, and here we're looking over at the Cologne era novels where there's some of my favorite stuff there. It's like you could see the Yoda Dark Rendezvous, actually, the book that I've recently talked about. You know, this era helped me get into the prequels and really appreciate the story that George Lucas was trying to tell. Even though I didn't enjoy much of what I saw in, in the actual films, the books more than supplemented exciting thrills and awesome characters and great storylines. And it's just a, such a huge and awesome addition to the franchise. And here we're getting to this part is uh, where we see the young Han Solo trilogy, where I also talked about how they relate in spirit to the solo movie, which obviously the film didn't follow the plot of these books, but certain elements made it into it. Um, the Force Awakens uh, titles, I wasn't really looking into getting them because, you know, they tie in into a video game, and sometimes I would question whether there would be quality books or not. But as I became a completionist over the years, and I said, well, you know what, if I'm going to go for it, I might as well collect all of the paperbacks and by that time i believe it was a kind of late for me to start getting the hard covers because many of them were out of print by that time it's something that i'm trying to do and i will actually try to show off in my next video where you guys will see my you know small collection of legends uh, hardcover books of course anything by tim john is awesome i have not read allegiance yet or the choices of one on among things so you'll be surprised but it's quite a bit of uh, books from the legends that I have not read. You know, I claim to know quite a bit about the expanded universe because I constantly research. I have as many questions as you guys have. Sometimes I mix up my characters or certain events of the books. And honestly, it's been such a long time. Like, for example, the uh, Shadows of the Empire, you book, the book you saw over there, or the Truce of Bakura, which you see on the screen. It's the first Star Wars book I ever read. You know, they kind of get hazy in your memory after so many years have passed. And you got to go back to Wikipedia and read the synopsis of the book. And then I'm able to kind of review it and situate myself. Now, the X-Wing series is something that I've been putting off for many, many years. I said, well, you know what? These are all about space combat. It's something that interests me a little less on the tier of, like, excitement. And I always go for the Jedi battles and lightsaber duels first. So I wanted to leave these for the last but I finally got to it, and I said, well, you know what, no, let's get into it, because, you know, uh, Michael Sackpaul, Aaron Alliston, they're some of my favorite Star Wars authors, so I'm now on book four, and I'm immensely enjoying it, it's a fantastic, fantastic series, I honestly could recommend it to anyone. Courtship of Princess Leia, that was also one of my earliest and favorite books, obviously, the original uh, uh, Thrawn trilogy goes without question, these books that you guys see here, I've acquired when they were the last year and a half that they were on the shelves before they added that uh, yellow Legends banner, which actually I don't mind. I think it kind of looks pretty cool. It doesn't tarnish the look of the books 
in any way, it still has that vintage appeal. Um, you see it here by Kevin J. Anderson's The Jedi Academy Trilogy, my all-time favorite books, also I, Jedi. I mean, Legends had plenty of awesome stuff. Yes, there was some mediocrity. There's a couple of books here. We're getting into the uh, the Dark Saber Trilogy or the Children of the Jedi Trilogy. It's actually four books. And uh, the Crystal Star and a Planet of Twilight, which a lot of fans for some reason have a pro problem with. They don't enjoy this book as, as much. I do. Um, here we go. This is the Black Fleet Crisis, which was also pretty damn awesome. I really enjoyed that series a lot. Um, and actually looking back at this collection that I have, the... Um, Karelian trilogy with Han Solo, of course, and we see his uh, uh, brother there, who's like a, a kind of a villain. It's really fun to look back at these. Look at the wonderful covers of the Spectre of the Past and Vision of the Future. Vision of the Future has my favorite Mara Jade illustration of all time. This is the way how I picture her. And you're looking back at these covers and all of these books that I've read through my college years. Uh, and, of course, the Vector Prime in the beginning of the New Jedi Order, which was fascinating. I mean, it was so exciting. And, you know, these books got me through so much dark times in my life. You know, when my older brother passed away, I was depressed for a very, very long time. And, you know, this was my escapism. I had tremendous pressure in college because I had to do well in school, pay a lot of money for my tuition, go to work and study at the same time. So, you know, I don't let myself down i don't let my parents down new jedi order is something else i always considered it was a little bit on the dark side it's like almost like a grim dark space fantasy with horror elements because these yuzang vong uh faction these new villains were pretty dark and some of the things that happened between jason and his younger uh younger uh sibling anakin and also later on in uh legacy of the force with uh ben skywalker some really, really harsh to accept stuff. And I was like, oh man, this is this is pretty dark for space fantasy that Star Wars is supposed to be, you know, this family saga. But I embraced, embraced it all the same because the books of Star Wars have their own tone. And even when you go from series to series, from like New Jedi Order to the uh, Legacy series to Fate of the Jedi and the previous, you know, Bantam era stuff, each era brings its own sensibility, its own style, the Joyner uh, King trilogy, the Swarm War trilogy, that also had a very unique style to it. And you really had to keep an open mind and, you know, and adapt to what these authors are trying to bring to you. Because believe it or not, I don't ever recall talking to somebody or meeting other fans. And I met quite a few of them actually physically seeing people in Barnes and Nobles. A lot of people ask for my recommendation after they heard me speak for a couple of minutes that, you know, I really know my stuff with legends, I can situate myself in terms of the timeline. And I've never met a person who was consistently pleased with everything that legends had to bring to the table. There were always people and fans who were like, mm, I don't know, like, for example, Millennium Falcon over there. It wasn't what I was looking for. And James Lucina is actually one of my favorite Star Wars authors. But the book wasn't for me. You know, it's not an indicator where the book is good or bad. I just didn't like it. The Fate of the Jedi is actually where I am third book in that's one series i also have not completed yet um i am enjoying it it was a little bit hard to accept in the beginning this whole new concept of uh, a new peril that the jedi are in it was a tough sell in the beginning and i actually know quite a few people who don't like the fate of the jedi series i kind of did maybe i'm a little bit more lenient than other fans guys i'll be honest with you i'm not too highly critical like i know my personal taste i know what i'm looking for uh but i'm not too critical because I try to keep an open mind, and I understand these are not movies. These are not specifically, precisely George Lucas's vision, even though a lot of this stuff was under his like indirect uh, control or supervision, so to speak. Like for example, this Young Jedi Knight series. Pretty sure it's something that George Lucas himself didn't have a lot of say in. He's like, okay, we have established there's Jedi twins, Jason and Jaina. You know, ball with it. See what you can do. And uh, Kevin J. Anderson and his wife, Rebecca Muesta. Um, some of you guys can know my channel who visited the Facebook. I started this uh, campaign on uh, uh, change.org trying to bring these back in print because I absolutely love them. And guess what? What got me into these books was actually the covers. I mean, look at them. They're absolutely amazing. 
These are illustrations by David Dorman, and I recently did also a video for him, like an artist highlight, because I love talking about these artists. And they sell these books. They're so full of story and rich with character, and they they just built that excitement. You know, I am one of those guys that does buy a book based on the cover. You know, obviously I know about these authors and I know what the general direction is, but I just I'm such a sucker for great art. You know, I'm an artist myself, and it's just wonderful to see. These uh, two hardcovers of the uh, Young Jedi Knights series, the compilations, uh, I was able to get these two volumes quite recently off eBay for a decent price. Uh, the Last Jedi uh, paperbacks are also a recent purchase that I was trying to find something that I could buy in the bulk from a single person. And fortunately, I found somebody on the, uh, eBay that had them in nearly perfect condition. You could tell this dude was a collector, you know, and uh, we conversated a little bit back and forth, back and forth. He was able to bring down the price just a bit for me. And I was so happy with these purchases. It's as if I bought them myself. I tried to buy as much stuff as possible firsthand. You know, I want to be the first owner. But unfortunately, some of these books are really, really hard to get, you know. And even though some people post them on this eBay or other, you know, uh, reseller kind of like uh, online auctions, sometimes they don't really represent the description that people try to put on them uh this jedi apprentice series is the latest purchase i had actually earlier this year i believe in the spring again i got them from this other person it was all collected in in one uh sale on on ebay again i was so happy with it and it's something that i'm really curious to get into because it focuses on qui Gon jinn and after reading the canon novel um uh, master and apprentice with Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan, I was completely blown away how much I cherished and how much I missed Qui Gon Jinn. To be frank with you guys, it was almost a revelation to me. Like, oh my God, I am a prequels fan. You know, uh, again, it's the prequel films for me could have been a lot more, a lot more consistent, much better directed. But so what? You know, there's still so much content to enjoy, and I encourage everybody, even newcomers. You know, if you guys are just starting off with canon titles, and if you feel a little bit confused or disoriented, still, sooner or later, try to take a dive. Pick a book from Legends that you might like, or maybe a certain period, or a certain hero or characters that you are interested in, and you can always jump in and start enjoying it. Um, uh, the Junior Jedi Knights was another series that, you know, was a pretty cool um, collection that I got, once again, from one person. Uh, I guess I, like, keep stumbling across these collectors, and these guys really, you know, take care of their books, especially these are pretty flimsy. This is a, uh, this is a bonus part. These are a couple of box sets that I got. I'll uh, show you. I'll pick pull this one out so you can see it up closer, which is a, the pride of my Legends collection here. I'm really happy that uh, Disney is reprinting a lot of these short stories in this hardcover collections from the Insider magazine that weren't available before. Now, this is the only series that I have that was available before without the Legends Stripe. I wasn't too keen on getting these. I, I don't mind having these in le with Legends Stripes. It's, it's all the same to me. But as you could have seen, I got most of the, my books actual, you know, firsthand as they were coming out without the that Yellow Legends band. And of course, the new reissues of Legends are fantastic. I'm so happy with them. Here, guys, take a look. This wasn't as expensive as I, I thought it would be. It's still in plastic. It's the first three books of the Young Jedi Knight series. I'm ecstatic for being able to find it on uh, eBay and purchase it off this person. I, I love it. I'm, I don't know if I'll ever open it. I'll just keep it this way. Unfortunately, they didn't do any other box sets. But yeah, guys, this pretty much encompasses my entire Legends softcover collection. I hope you enjoyed this. In my next video, I'm going to try to pull together all the hardcover uh, uh, Legends books that I've acquired. Of course, this is the uh, Jedi Academy trilogy now with the Legends band. I did this, decided to pick up another copy of it just because. You know, this is my favorite trilogy of all time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like my channel, please uh, consider subscribing. Hit that sub button. Hit the bell button. Let me know in the comments down below which books are you currently on. And I'll see you all later. Take care, guys.